Hi, let me show you how I set up my Unreal Engine project so that we are on the same page when starting this tutorial series. We are going to create a blank Unreal Engine 5.3 project, look into my settings, import the content pack and discuss some conventions and style guides that help you to organize your file and folder structure. Let's get started. I have version 5.3.2 installed. I really recommend to use this version or something newer because we are going to explore some relatively new features throughout the series and older versions might not be supported. In any case, I recommend to go to the options and check the editor symbols for debugging. It's quite big, but it's really worth it because it enables you to go deep down the call stack and understand the inner workings of the engine with the help of a debugger. Let's start the engine. Now in the Unreal Project Browser, we go to Games, select the blank C++ template without starter content and I name it FAB for Fabric or Fabulous and I create the project. The first thing I'd like to do is to go to project settings and change the copyright notice because this text will be pasted everywhere in your C++ header files as a comment, so it's kind of important. I also changed quite some things in the editor preferences. Here I want to check that the source code editor is set to writer U project because I prefer to not generate a solution file for Visual Studio. I disable live coding. I actually don't use it at all. It's a nice feature, but for my workflow it causes more trouble than it helps. I also don't want Unreal to autocompile new C++ classes. When I open an asset, I want it to happen in a tab in the main window instead of a new window. If you have this option checked, every time you double click blueprint nodes, it's going to open Visual Studio no matter if you have writer set or not, which is very annoying. And finally, I search for a graph editor to show you my shortcuts that are used to align blueprint nodes and their connections to make them neat and pretty. Talking about shortcuts. One shortcut I use like everywhere, not only in Unreal, is Alt-Shift to collapse or uncollapse everything. Usually, here in the outliner, I first collapse everything with Alt-Shift pressed and then I uncollapse only the first hierarchy level. Now I am adding the starter content and the third person template to this project. I know I could have selected the third person template and starter content already in the process of creating the project. I just wanted to show you that you don't have to decide this upfront. You can even turn a blueprint into a C++ project by just adding a C++ class. Now in the directory tree with Alt Shift pressed, I collapse everything and go to the content folder. I create a new folder and move everything that I just imported into this new folder. I don't mind the mornings because I don't plan to use chair and table. We still have leftovers, which I will try to delete. But this message, which is very familiar to me, tells me that there are some non-displayable references. Often this can be solved by right-clicking the folder, fixing up the redirectors and deleting the folders again. I think this is also a great point to close the editor, cause we have to restart it anyways to apply the settings that we made before. I don't need a Visual Studio solution file. You should avoid deleting folders here in the explorer, but if fixing up redirectors did not help, it could be the last resort. Alright, let's start Unreal again. In the content folder, I'm going to create a new folder called fab, like our project name. Everything we add to our project that is actually used in the game is supposed to be placed here in this root folder. I will also add this folder to favorites and I give it a color. Now, whenever we have a mess here, we can find our root folder in the favorites or identify it by the color. Okay, back in the fab directory, I create a new folder called maps and under imported, I just go to third person, maps, and I copy this map over to our maps folder. I also add a game directory and then I go to imported, third person, blueprints, and I copy this game mode over here. Last but not least, I take this third person character and I'm going to do a careful here, an advanced copy. This character blueprint has a lot of dependencies to other assets which are copied along with a blueprint. 
Here in this advanced copy dialog, I hold Alt Shift and click on BP third person character to specify that everything should depend on the new copies instead of the original assets. Now we strictly separated our blueprints and its dependencies from the starter content, which has a couple of advantages when we start modifying it. In the next step, I'm going to rename our map, the game mode and character. I give them a fab prefix. I know I'm not very creative here, but I'm probably going to change the name later anyways. Before I rename the character, I create a new folder called player and I move it here because we will create more characters later on that share the same mannequin assets. Finally, in order to make everything work, we have to go to project settings, maps and modes. Uh, let's go back and select the map from the folder and set this to be our default map. And of course, the same goes for our game mode. We also have to open the game mode and select our player character as a default pawn class. Compile, save all. And don't forget to check that the game mode is not accidentally overwritten in the world settings. Yeah, at this point I'd like to restart the engine. I'd like to see if everything worked correctly. Therefore, I can bring back my cursor with Shift-1 and see if uh, it's not the correct blueprint used here. The reason for this is that there's a game mode override, so I'm going to change this to none, so that we use our project settings instead. And now if I do this and I eject again, I should see yeah the correct BP player character. All right. Let me briefly explain how I organize my files. In the character folder, I created a player folder and I copied the BP player character over. It has its own folder because in the future there's going to be more content here that is specific to the player character. So the general rule is that one-to-one -one specific assets are going into their own folder. On the other hand, assets that are being shared, like these meshes here, assets that I'm going to use for more than one blueprint, are located in a common folder. If you open the content browser settings, you can unhide the developer's content folder. It contains a directory that is specific to the user and you can put everything you want to experiment with into this folder. The assets that you are using in the game should not reference anything in that folder because you can exclude it from your cooked build in the settings and everything will break. If you have more questions about how to organize and name your files, there are some good websites like the official recommended naming conventions on the Unreal Engine website. Quite comprehensive is uh, this style guide here on GitHub and there is also the unrealistic style guide and the official coding standard. I'd use a guideline more as an orientation and maybe you want to derive something that fits for you or your team. The only thing that matters is to stay consistent. You can also get inspiration from projects like Lyra and you will quickly realize that they also don't follow conventions too strictly. Also keep in mind that conventions of such big projects might produce some abstraction overhead and probably should not be adapted one to one for your smaller project. I hope I could help creating the Unreal Engine project. Don't forget the GitHub link to this video in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.